Cool. Hey, everyone. So, learning Shadow DOM is pretty difficult. I've spent uh, a good number of weeks kind of to wrap my head around it. It's a very uh, complex sort of topic, and there's a lot to it. Um, but at its core, uh, Shadow DOM provides us sort of enca an encapsulation layer for our DOM content. So conceptually what it looks like is, is this. Um, the left side is your just regular markup, your regular DOM. It's called the host node. The host node has children, just as you would expect um, you know, some markup to have. On the right side is what you're attaching to this host node. So this is your shadow DOM, this is your shadow tree. And there's a sort of layering around it, this shadow boundary that encapsulates this DOM as, as sort of something special and sort of hidden away from the user. So the Shadow DOM has its own children, right? You, you specify you know, the markup and however you want it to look and feel. And then what happens is you attach the Shadow DOM to the host node, to a root host node. And what happens at render time in the browser is you have that, that basic, that first node, and the Shadow Tree is rendered in place of the host children. So these things on, on the left here. And in certain cases, you can stamp out insertion points. So you can say, in my Shadow DOM, I want to specify certain select areas for different children of the host node to be injected. And so what happens at render time is you have this sort of mix, this blend of the host node elements and your, your shadow DOM markup. So this is kind of challenging to understand. And at first, when I started to wrap my head around this, I had no idea what was going on. Um, so I decided to build a tool called the Shadow DOM Visualizer that sort of represents this in real time. And you can, you can play around with your host node markup and your shadow DOM markup. So on the left side here, uh, the blue area is your host element. The host element has some markup. It's got my name and some H2s. It's got a description, some other elements inside of that, a footer, another div in there. Uh, and you can see when I attach the Shadow DOM, this, the Shadow DOM content is yellow. When I attach my Shadow DOM content, what's rendered is a hybrid of the two, the blue and the red. The Shadow DOM content being yellow and the host node being blue. And my Shadow DOM content contains a header, a section, a footer, and inside of that I have different content insertion points. So this insertion point is selecting out all the H2s, this uh, insertion point is selecting out any divs with the description class, and this insertion point is pulling out the H4s. So what you see here on the right side is a visual representation of that. And so the host element is a thing at the top, and what's being uh, rendered below it is the shadow DOM. So the shadow DOM's attached itself, it's leeching sort of off of the host element, you have the header, you have the section, you have the footer, and inside of those you have content insertion points. So in this example, um, the insertion point is yellow because it's in the shadow DOM, right? It's logically in the shadow DOM. And it's got this blue border around it to just signify that it's um, selecting out blue elements, blue elements from the host node. And in this case, it's selecting out the H4s with that select attribute. And what's rendered below is that uh, H4 with the footer text. Similarly, these other content insertion points are doing exactly as you'd expect. This one's selecting out both of the H2s. Um, just, uh, to, just to show you, I can change this on the fly. So you can add my middle name, right? This is all live editable. Um, if I change this insertion point to be uh, first of type, it's only going to select out that first H2, that one that says Eric David. So this is a pretty cool um, way to sort of see what's going on. Again, if I change this content insertion point, to be something, another class for instance, um, it doesn't match any of the host elements in this case, so this content insertion point is sort of a no-op at that point. So, you know, visualize the, the host node, visualize the shadow DOM, and sort of roll over these to see how sort of it, this stuff is rendered in the browser. Uh, it's kind of difficult to understand at first, but hopefully this